Hey, Leela Viss here. I'm exploring options in Zoom and I like the share screen option. So I wanted to show you some ideas. So I'm clicking on the share screen button down at the bottom of the screen of Zoom. And when I do that, I get three options, basic, advanced, and files. So I'm going to basic and then I've got a number of PDFs already opened on my desktop. I think that's key is to have it open so that you can find it quickly when you want to share your screen. And I'm going to share this right here, which some of you may have gotten already. Uh, it's my grand staff map. Now, some of you may be wondering, why is the treble clef and the bass clef on the wrong side? I'm going to flip this PDF just a little bit so that you can see why I did this. And then I'm going to use the annotate option in Zoom, which you're going to find on the right hand corner of the Zoom menu. And I'm going to go over to draw. I'm just going to click on a big fat highlighter type thing right there. There we go. And I'm what I'm doing is I'm drawing, <laughs> not drawing very straight lines, but I'm trying to draw straight lines between the uh, landmarks to the keyboard so that students can understand the relationship between those two. And then uh, when I go back to my PDF, I can flip it around. Now, unfortunately, that the lines don't stay there, but I'll get out the eraser and I can get rid of those. But that's a good way to just make your point of how the grand staff is actually related to the keyboard. Now, here's some ideas for how you could use this grand staff in your lessons and use some ear training at the same time. So first of all, with early learners, I might just pick treble G and I will say, okay, so that's treble G. You memorize that sound, don't forget it. And you may even play it on your piano. Let's hear it on your piano. And then I'm going to play treble G or I'm not gonna play treble G. Maybe I'll play a different landmark. So I may say, oh, is, does this sound like treble G? Why don't you play your treble G? No, it doesn't sound like treble G. Does this sound like treble G? No, that does not. Does this sound like it? Yes. So there's some ear training right there for you. And you could also switch roles and have your student do the same thing for you. Now, for some that are getting used to all these different landmarks, there's all the treble clef landmarks right there. I may say, okay, which one did I play? And they may say, oh, cloud C. Okay, can you play it? Okay, now which one did I play? Now, it may not be easy for them to find it right away, but I want them to poke around. Oh, yep, I found it. It's a treble G. So letting them explore and try out their ears with this grand staff map is a great way to use this screen share option. So I'm going to share another screen. And I'm going to stop sharing this one. And again, you can always go back to the share screen green button and um, I want to show you something that Sam Coates, good friend Sam Coates, is offering at her website, Blitz Books, and she is offering all these different types of staves that you can use as a screen share. And then again with the annotate option in Zoom, you can draw on them. So let's see, I don't know, I'm doing this on my mouse so it's not going to be very pretty. Oh, not very good at all. There's my treble clef. And Sam and I were exploring ideas and we noticed that students can also use this annotate option on theirs. So what you could do is now, well, it's a little bit easier for me to do with my, um, just my finger like that is, there we go, draw some circles. And again, you could do some ear training. So can you play that picture for me? Very good. I'm not worried about pitch, or I'm sorry, with rhythm at all. Now, can you do this? Can you play that back? Oh, good. What did I do? Which key did I play two times? Oh, the middle one. And what's that one called? A. You know, just get, doing some of those simple ear training exercises are so good because they cannot see your hand. They can see what you're talking about, but they cannot see your hand. And then again, have them test you as well. All right, one other thing I want to show you that's kind of fun. Uh, a colleague from Canada gave me this idea to do with my students, and it's a stuck inside survival guide. So I've sent all of these options to my students, and we're having an inter-studio competition right now, now and seeing how many students can complete all of these squares by Friday. 
I don't know. I don't know if my students are going to get to it or not. I think some of them will. I do think some parents are a little bit overwhelmed right now, and this may feel like just one more thing, but I'm hoping that my students will show up for this. All right, and I'm going to show you one other option that you may have already uh, hiding in your stash of tools, and that is something called uh, Rhythm Produce. Do any of you remember that? It's something that I've used before, and um, I usually use them as cards. So let me share my screen here again with you so that you can see what I'm talking about here. But this could be a way, again, for you to explore some rhythm and ear training exercises. So let me share my screen here. And there is Rhythm Produce. Remember these cards? You probably have them you know, as printed as cards already. So you could just hold them up to the screen too. You don't have to do the special screen sharing. But what you could do is just have students clap it back. Bert chops applesauce. Clap it back. Good. Watermelon sauce. Da 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 da. And lettuce and tomato. Da 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 da. Pineapple smoothie. Da da da. And then what you could do is do it again, but not say the words. So can you guess what I did here? Dun, 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 dun. Yes, very good. Watermelon slice. So that's a fun way to use those rhythm produce cards. So don't forget about the tools that you may already have. And you can share your screen or just hold up the card right to the camera. You don't have to get that fancy. All right, now I want to do something else with this share the screen. Now I happen to have a camera. I have an older camera that I've had around for a long time. And when I go to my share screen and go to the advanced option, I can share content from a second camera. And now you can see I've got my camera over my Cloud Nova here. And students can see my hands, which is a really nice option. But also what I decided to do is this would be a good place to use my uh, tissue rhythm boxes. Someone reminded me of that too. Thank you for all of those who remind me of all these tools that I have but I forget about. So again, here's a fun little ear training or if you really wanted to get students to feel that steady beat and start practicing reading rhythms, um, you could use something like this. So they could clap it back. Dun, 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 dun. How many boxes do you see? Oh, there's four. Okay, I'm going to change one box. Can you tell me which box did I change? Okay, and what I may even do I've got my drum handy. I've got one of these drums. I don't know how well this is going to work sound-wise, so I still have to figure this out. But I'm going to change one box. Can you tell me which box I changed? Can you clap it back? Bum, 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 bum. And which box did I change? Two. And what did I change it to? Did I change it to a three or did I change it to... Ah, yes, there we go. Let's clap this or drum this together. Ready, go. Nice. Now, what you could also then do is move these over to the side just a little bit and just have a little fun creating um, a tune from these. Just using one pitch or maybe two pitches. And if our students are really scared about, oh, I don't know if I can use two pitches, and I say, okay, when you get to this box, use your finger two on D. So let's try that once. Nice. And you could keep going. They could create a melody. And you'd have to copy it. Again, testing your ear skills as well as theirs can be a lot of fun. All right, let's see. I think I covered what I wanted to. You know, I, I hope that things are going okay for you. I know it's not an easy time for anybody, not for our students, not for their parents, not for us. So I hope that, you know, we can we can help our students move along even through this online process. So take care and take courage and I'll hopefully have some more tips for you. And I'd love to hear your tips and ideas too. All right, bye.